I finally figured out a way to have vectors from AI art. And on top of that, how to have consistent styling across different logos or even icon packs. Now this is using Recraft. It's a brand new AI website and it promises to use it a little bit more for graphics designers, those who are actually using AI art for business. And this is perfect because in the past, AI art generation, usually as a JPEG or a PNG, you have to put it into Photoshop before you can use it. And while you have lots of different styling options, consistency is very hard to get. Then on top of that, having a vector that you can resize to any size you want, well, that's just unheard of. So that's kind of what I want to do in this video. Starting on Google, I'm going to type in Recraft AI. It's the very first result just over here. I'm going to select it and it's going to take me to this page here where I'm going to select to try Recraft for free. Now, I've actually tested it out a little bit already and it's pretty cool, but I'm going to start off with a brand new project and the interface is kind of like Figma if you guys have used Figma before. I have two options, a regular image or a vector image. Let's start off with a regular image and I'm going to do something like a ham burger. Uh, and I'll do this kind of as a plastic 3D because that's what I want to see and select Recraft. So this will start generating. You can see I can move this around. I can zoom in and out and I can still create more content. So now I'll do a vector image and this time I'll still do a vector of a hamburger, but this time I can select a style. I'm just going to select a vector art as the style here and see what comes up. So my 3D one has already appeared and you can see it's this nice looking almost like plastic hamburger. I can also select different variations. So it's got these two versions. I'll stick with this one. It looks really nice. I can right click and save this as a PNG or a JPG, but it's not a vector here on the right hand side. I've got the vector being generated. And this also looks like a pretty good hamburger. The only difference with this one here is that while I can select different variations, I can also right click and export this as an SVG. If I do so, I can drag this back into Chrome and I've got this nice looking hamburger, which I can resize to any size and I can place this into a website and actually use it, which is exactly what I'm looking for. I think I'll open up a Wix studio right now and test out how this actually works inside of a no coding platform. I'm going to go here select to add a shape to this section for the shape. I'm going to select a basic shape, select upload media and just drag and drop this hamburger straight in. And here it is. I can now see it on here. There are a few adjustments I would make such as removing the background. Maybe I can do that straight in Recraft. Let me actually check. So I'm going to select it to double click it. And uh, let's see. And I've got this color here. Let's see if I set the transparency this to be nothing. Yeah, there we go. We actually have a transparent version. I could probably export this as SVG once more. Select to upload this new one that I have. Use that. And now we've got a transparent version. So that's how quick it was to create a hamburger icon that's a vector inside of a website. There's only one issue here, and it's the fact that these designs right now don't match my actual community and this green and black that I have going on. And this is where I want to change this icon to match that style. So what I might do is actually download some of the icons I already have here and utilize these as the base style for creating some new icons. Here in Photoshop, I've got one of my merge icons and this is actually one that I've exported as an SVG, but to use it, I need it to be a PNG. I've set the width and height to be 512 because if it's too small, it might not work properly. So what I'm going to do is head over here to a vector image and I've got a little box here to generate that. I'm going to select to change the style and I'm going to use my own style. I'm going to add it from image. And for this style, I'm going to call it something like maybe merge a logo or icon. I'll select this one over here that I just created in Photoshop and select a create style. And now with this as a hamburger option, I'm going to recraft and hopefully generate something that looks similar to my merge icon set. And here it is. I've got two options. I've got a black and a green version. Uh, looks all right. There's quite a bit of styling here, but I've got a few different variations I can create. So I'm going to try one more. Here on vector art, I'm going to create another styling option. I'm going to select my vector art and create a new one. And I wanted to try to use a more basic style. So this one I'm going to call merge logo two. I'm going to select to use just my merge logo this time itself. So this only has the green and black without the white. And hopefully this gives me another option when I select to recraft it and have another example of that hamburger. And this is what's useful. I can continue to recraft a different options and play around with the styling until I get something that looks just right. Okay, I think I can use these, but they've got this white background. 
selecting them and selecting the white and setting the opacity to zero, kind of like how I did with the 3D one, doesn't particularly work because these white bits also show up in the middle of the hamburger as well as the background. But there is an option to hopefully solve this. I can right click and select remove background. And hopefully not only does this remove the background, but it keeps its shape as an SVG. Let me try this also on the other one here on the right hand side. Looks like it worked. And if I right click, I can still export to SVG. This is going to be useful since I need to resize it or maybe shrink it down later once it's on my website. Speaking of that, here on the Emerge website, I still have this hamburger which doesn't fit the styling. So let me select it and upload and drag in this new hamburger and see how that works on the website instead. I've got this black one here, so let me select to add it to page and here it is at the top right. Looks pretty good as an icon, but unfortunately it doesn't look like a clickable item. It just looks like something like a hamburger floating in space. So maybe the version with the green background will be better. Let me select and export that as SVG. I'll upload it here on Wix Studio and there it is. It actually looks much better and now like an actual clickable button. Though it doesn't make sense to have this on the desktop or tablet view. A better place would be just to have it on the mobile view here so that it can toggle the navigation which can drop down. So one icon is good, but normally a site needs way more than a single icon. So I've got this option here to create a set of icons, which is what I want to do next. I'm going to make a set just over here. And since I've already defined my vector style for this merger logo, I think I'll reuse that. Maybe this one over here. And then I'll make a list of icons. Search, map, house, lightning and music. So while that's loading up, what I might do is create one more set. I'll select to create a set here on the right hand side. And instead of using the basic logo, I'm going to use the merge icon because I want to create an icon set based on other icons rather than the logo itself. I'll just fill out the same thing, search, house, map, etc. And now both of them are generating at the same time. Looks like they're done. I've got a search, an envelope, it does seem to be missing that bottom segment here and a map one as well. What I might do actually is select these ones that didn't work and select to recraft them, hoping that that will kind of just figure out that they need to be fixed up. I might do the same for the map because that little pin looks like it's not centered. Here on the right hand side set, I've got a black version, which is great, but it's not using the right color. So I'm going to actually go to the color palette and select to use a specific color palette, which is the green and black. And hopefully those can come back looking a little bit better too. So the icons on the left set look much better. It actually looks like an envelope and a map. On the right hand side, they look very similar. I think that's because of the color branding. What I might do is switch the colors from green and black to black and green, basically reversing them. I want the background circle to be black rather than green and the icons to be green or white. So let me give that a shot and recraft them. That worked out better than accepted. Now I have these two variations, the black version and the green version, and I want to test them out on the website, see how they look in different sections. I like this section here. I've got these pixelated ones and I don't really like their style. I think a better version that looks closer to the logo might work. I'll right click and download this one as an SVG, and then I'll upload it here to the website. I'll select it to replace the logo I had earlier, and here it is. You've got this thunder one, and I think that looks great in comparison to the others. There are a few other options here that I wanted to test out. One of them was being able to generate a seamless image. It's basically like a background repeating pattern and this can be used quite well on different website sections or even to break a section apart. So what I'm gonna do is pass in programmers running as my prompt here and I'm gonna select to recraft that. I also think that I'll create a few different ones. I'll make another one here called computers and keyboards and mice, and maybe even a third one, which will just be computers. So those are generating and they're coming out quite well. You can see the people running here on the left. I've got a few different examples like this one here. I've got these computers and keyboards, but right now the styling doesn't really add up with the current style. So I'm going to change the palette and I'll select to use the black and greens that I'm currently using on my website for each one of these. Here are the results. And I have to say, I like this one on the top left the most. It's 
got these programmers which look like they're actually running on some code and that's awesome. I also wanna copy these out a few times to see if they're actually tiled. It's hard to tell from a human point of view, but if I put them next to each other, I can see that they are in fact seamless and I could use this for the background of a different section on my website. And here I'll just paste it in. I'm thinking maybe just to have a whole row of these so that it separates the section above it. And you can see the glass morphism works well, the colors fit in natively, and it looks pretty good. I also took some time to test out some of the other things going on here, like the styles for line art or outlines, even some of the regular image styles, such as illustration or photorealism, or even this one called green, which I think is one of my favorites because it gives me this kind of semi-realistic 3D look for icons. Once I made all of these, I could keep reusing them, copying out the prompts or the styling, changing the colors or variations, and this was actually just much more of an enjoyable experience using AI finally as an actual way to design different content for my website. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you to Recraft for sponsoring it. They're entirely free if you want to get started and there should be a link in the description where you can check them out.